Harry's wife. Part 101.17 Why was she so anxious at the Windsor walkabout? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This question has been posed a number of times. I have touched on it as alongside the video analysis, but it behoves me to make specific mention of it in a video of its own. Many of you have either seen pictures or, more likely, the videos that have emerged from the Windsor walkabout that took place over the weekend when the Prince and Princess of Wales attended at Windsor Castle with Prince Harry and Harry's wife, the four of them looking at the bouquets before then doing a meet and greet with the various members of the public that had gathered there. The Wales is going down one side of the public and the Sussex is doing the other. This, of course, provided us with repeated opportunities to analyse what was going on with regard to the dynamic between the four and, of course, Harry's wife's interactions with the crowd, which had been covered in parts passim of 101.13. One of the things that stood out was the clear anxiety of Harry's wife. There has been some speculation about the fact that she was reeking of alcohol, this has not been reported in the press or the broadcast media. It has made its presence known repeatedly on the internet. I haven't spoken to anybody who was actually in that crowd to confirm that that was the case. I understand it's been spoken about on social media. It remains to be seen whether there's any credence in that regard. There's also a comment about the awkward movements of Harry's wife, in part, because she tends to wear oversized shoes, something that I've dealt with in parts passing. Part of her movement was born out of the fact that she was anxious. Her anxiety was demonstrative through the way she was touching her hair, through the way that she was moving, and, of course, her facial expression. There was no confident thrusting herself at people that we've seen in the past. There was no working the crowd in a way which suggested that it was all about her. Instead, when it came to dealing with the, the Prince and Princess of Wales, she repeatedly tried to catch their eye gaze in order to assert control over them. And she was in more of a reaction setting, if I can put it that way, whereby she was not taking the initiative and forging ahead, but was in effect waiting to be told what to do. We see that repeatedly in the footage. But what was behind this clear and obvious anxiety? Well, there were two things. The first was this. Her narcissism recognised that in effect she was entering the lion's den. She was going back to the United Kingdom, a country that she's thrown pelters at repeatedly. Now, She has returned before, having thrown pelters at the UK and the royal family, for instance, during the Platinum Jubilee. But there, she chose to attend. Therefore, she felt, subconsciously, that she was asserting the control. Here, the Queen's death outmaneuvered her. Of course, she had no interest in the health of the monarch, and, although it was understood that she was in ill health, and was deteriorating, of course, El Ginger Bollocks and his wife were forging ahead with their own false royal tour with the attendance at the One uh, Young World Summit and then jetting off to Dusseldorf and then returning for the Well Child Awards. Those had the kibosh placed upon them because of the death of the monarch. The fact is, Harry's wife was taken unawares by this death and, as a consequence of this, had little choice in the matter but be dragged along by the events rather than seeking to influence them as in the way that she ordinarily would. So in the past, when she'd returned with the Platinum Jubilee, she decided she wanted to do that. She wanted to milk it at the shushing of the colour and at the service of booing. We saw the way that she sashayed down the aisle, milking all of the attention whilst Harry looked most uncertain when entering the service of booing. Here... This wasn't set up by her. She hadn't decided to attend. She was essentially dragged along to attend 
by events, which were far, far bigger than her. So that in itself created a threat to control. It also meant that she was being retained in a country involving the royal family and members of the public that would be hugely sympathetic to Queen Elizabeth's passing, and all of that amounts to a threat to control. It's one thing turning up at the One Young World Summit, or whatever it's called, with a crowd that's hand-picked by floozies and paid to be uh, paid to attend, that are there all, essentially, to be compliant and supportive. It's quite another thing to suddenly find yourself being kept in the country when you didn't think you were, to attend an event that you didn't anticipate was going to happen, to be amongst a crowd that your narcissism perceives as hostile. Accordingly, being forced, in effect, to turn up and attend, even though there were attempts, of course, to hijack it for televisual purposes, all created a hostile environment. She wasn't in control of the situation. Her narcissism perceived that the people that she was meeting wouldn't think particularly well of her. And, of course, she was being thrust into an involvement with the royal family, not on her terms, and again, that presented a problem for her. So all of this created a backdrop of a threat to control. And that threat to control manifested as a sense of unease within her, causing her to no doubt dole out pity plays towards Prince Harry to keep utilising the grip of doom to assert control over him and draw fuel from him. It meant that she was faced with repeated challenges, as we saw with the snubbing that took place with some of the mourners. She shook hands, but she never looked entirely comfortable, and that was because all of the time, her narcissism was fighting to assert control over something much, much bigger than her. A deceased monarch, an entire nation, the people, the hundreds of people that were there. They weren't there for her, they were there for the monarch. They weren't there for her, they were there for the Prince and Princess of Wales. As I mentioned in another video, she wasn't paying second fiddle. She was left without a fiddle, and perhaps was just being thrown a broken maraca to play instead. All of this amounted to a massive threat to control, and this, along with the repeated instances where she wasn't being fueled, created this sensation of anxiety, unease, a restlessness, a nervousness. And her narcissism wasn't evolved enough to cover it up, so it showed. Then, on top of this backdrop, she had the conduct of the Prince and Princess of Wales, who expertly advised have reduced their involvement with Harry's wife to the absolute minimum. And therefore, although Prince William had a modicum of involvement with her, the Princess of Wales did not. And as I've explained in parts passing, this wounded her again and again and again. And so what was happening was... Because the Princess of Wales was on her radar, her subconscious narcissism declared, get her under control. So therefore she sought to do so, not by going over and saying, hello Catherine, how are you? Her narcissism was not so bold as to do that, but instead to try and catch her eye, to perhaps try and gain a, an appreciative or supportive glimpse from Catherine. That did not come forth, and therefore the wounding continued. Her fuel levels were dropping. She would receive fuel from the crowd when they were dealing with her and from Prince Harry, but she was getting none from the Princess and Princess of Wales. And particularly the early instances behind the private gates and when they were looking at the bouquets, she was getting very little fuel from elsewhere and her fuel levels were being diminished by the repeated wounding occasioned by the Prince and Princess of Wales, especially the Princess of Wales. So each time, because the Princess of Wales was next to her, her narcissism sought to get control over her. She tried by getting by glimpsing her, she didn't get it. She couldn't assert control indirectly, and instead, she therefore stayed in a position of withdrawal, basically feeling sorry for herself and thinking the Princess of Wales is a horrible, mean woman. She would get that control, but then it would be challenged again because she would see Catherine again stood next to her. And again, she'd try and get some control over her by looking at her. That would fail. She'd be wounded again. She would retreat into the third assertion of control, and this was happening over and over and over again. She was being unseated. She was being discombobulated by this repeated and sustained wounding. So she was coming at her from the left with the backdrop, and it was coming from the right with regard to the conduct of the Prince and Princess of Wales. And all of this coming together was a confluence of anxiety for Harry's wife.
Uh, narcissism translated this lack of control, these threats to control, into making her feel uneasy, weakened, vulnerable, anxious, unsettled. And it showed repeatedly. And that's why she was so anxious on the day of the walkabout. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.